Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu, taking a look at race number three at Belmont at the Big A on Sunday. Kicks off a 50 cent pick four. It's the grade three Knickerbocker. We're going a mile and an eighth on the outer turf. Before we take a look at the field, remember the DRF TV viewers get 10% off all DRF past performances. All you have to do to shop now is access the QR code and use the coupon code DRFTV10. Here is the field for the grade three at Knickerbocker. We have seven in here. Film star the seven, the four to five morning line favorite is entered main track only. If this race is on turf, it's not the biggest field in the world. But as you can see from our colleague David Aragona's morning line, it's very well matched. It is. It's really tough to go through this race as well because you have horses. I mean, we'll just start at the top. Chad Brown has, you know, the one and the two in here. One's coming off a lengthy layoff. The other one hasn't been in the winner's circle in almost two years at this point in his career. And then you have horses like Fort Washington. Great from off of it, but there's not a ton of pace in this race. Reckoning Force, Irish Prophet go down the page. I think there's a case to be made for everyone. So compact field, probably good from a betting perspective. And I'm just really curious when it comes to this race this weekend, how the betting public is going to play this race. You really hit the nail on the head as it pertains to pace, however. And I'm curious to see how our friends at Timeform US have it. They have Irish Prophet expected to make the lead. And Irish Prophet has never been on the lead at the pace call in any of his races but he's been close. And I guess close is good enough in a race like this. Reckoning Force was up close two starts back, going a mile and three sixteenths. I expect him to be in the thick of things. Really redistricting, I wonder, is kind of the key to this pace. He might be fresh in his first start in almost a year. He might be in the race uh, back in October of 2023. He was quite forward. And I think in terms of fractions, early fractions, comparable to the other two runners in here. And I just felt like looking at the past performances and looking at this pace projection, no one screams that they necessarily want the lead. And I think that's what makes it very tricky for the riders and just for the betting public to get a handle is how are they going to ride this race? How is it going to unfold, especially at the mile and an eighth trip? If the pace somehow gets hot, Fort Washington, the three, is the fastest time for U.S. late pace rating. Redistricting, again, could be the key to this race because he's still unexposed. This will be his four-year-old debut, and he did well when they didn't run him against grade one competition last year. He won both of those races. They tried the Belmont Derby in only his second lifetime start. Forgive him for that. They tried the Hollywood Derby last time out. He pulled up and looked uncomfortable. Here's what he could do when he feels good. Two starts back, an allowance race at Aqueduct. He's going to squeeze through in between horses and runs away from him. There's some talent here. Who knows what we get off the layoff? I wouldn't be surprised at all if he comes back firing for Chad Brown. You said it. It's Chad Brown. It's a long layoff. These are what these connections do. Uh, there's a lot of money put into these horses, right, to get them to the races. And I feel like, especially with turf horses and trying to I don't know, better the sport and have horses around for a longer time. They're okay to say financially, we can put a horse on the shelf for almost a year. We're going to come back and see what we have and probably take a couple of cracks at it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I just think looking at us two really good performances, the two wins in New York, it suggests there's talent there. And even looking outside of that, something went wrong at Del Mar, but he's faced good horses in these starts as well. And I think that's why they've decided to bring him back. And his, his workouts, uh, they certainly stepped up the last two over the train track of Belmont. And the winner is, is the number two. He won the grade two bourbon down at Keeneland as a two-year-old for Wayne Catalano. He's now with Chad, who probably gave him one off the layoff at Saratoga. Then he was just way over his head in the John's call going a mile and what, five-eighths? Last time out, he ran just fine. Let's watch. And the winner is going a mile and a sixteenth in an allowance race. He sat just off the pace, and the pace was not very fast. He finally gets into the clear, and he's going to make this close, and that's to his credit. Yeah, this is what he needed to do, right? He's not going to get it done, which would have been preferred for the connections, but I think he he gained a lot out of this race. He's been on the right track, and kind of looking at his return to the race is another horse that had a long, lengthy layoff. I mean, we hadn't seen this horse from May 2023 to July of this year at Saratoga, and look who he faced in that first race back. No, it wasn't a stakes race, but Major Dude just won at Keeneland. He participated in the Ford Star Dave earlier this year, Harlan Estate. Um, he's been in some tough spots, so he got the confidence that he needed last time out. My one concern is, look how slow the race went, though, and he was forward. I don't know what sort of trip he'll get, and, and that sort of muddles the pace projections. We didn't see him necessarily close to it, but... 
Um, it's all going to depend on those early fractions and he's going to be likely rolling late. And does that maybe work against him with no pace? That's there's potential for that to happen. Fort Washington certainly will be charging hard in the late stages. He was third in the Bernard Baruch last time out in his first start off of a short layoff. And he's already a dead heat graded stakes winner this year. From a quality standpoint, he fits this race like a glove. It's all about whether he gets the setup because as you mentioned, he really is a one run closer. He is um, through and through and kind of looking at what he's been able to do. I liked his performance last time out. I think a mile and a 16th might be a little short for him. I prefer him going a little bit longer, a mile and an eighth or what he can get from there. Um, his win at Monmouth Park, I think, kind of spoke to that. He was able to get that distance. He got the right trip that he needed from Kendrick. And Kendrick knows him very well. But mile and three ace, two starts back, he was too far back. So we'll see what we get out of him in this spot. I'm just very concerned where, from a class perspective, I think he's right up there with them, if not towards the top of the page, but he's going to be, I think, too far back against this group. Reckoning Forest is the number four, and I thought he was solid winning an allowance race at Saratoga. Two starts back at a mile and three sixteenths. He got a very nice trip as the favorite that day. He tracked the leader from the outside, made the top, and was very game to win. They ran him at Kentucky Downs last time out going a mile. I just think that feel was a little bit too tough for him. I like him at these slightly longer distances. And I'll say with the Kentucky Downs races, we never know what to do with them. Goliad was able to take them on the front end and can be very wicked when forwardly placed. And that was a, the case. And to see how this horse was able to adjust, I thought was huge. They went very fast. So he was outrun early, but at least he was able to pass horses and he had to pass a bunch of them to finish fourth there. He only missed by two and a quarter. Thought his two races prior to that are ones to really key in on. I think he can get a forward trip where maybe he is in the sweet spot early on, unlike some of the others that we talked about. They might have too much work to do. I think going a mile and an eighth, um, especially off of that fast race last time out, they're not going to go with those fractions in New York this weekend. He's going to get the right trip. I think Irish profit, it's a very good sign that Neil Drysdale's shipping him here from Southern California to compete in this race. We talked about it in the pace projector segment. He's been chasing some solid fractions at Santa Anita, and he should be able to make the lead here. This is also his third start off of February layoff. He has run well in both starts this form cycle. Uh, I thought he had a good trip last time out and couldn't get to the winner's circle, but the trip should be there for him here at a price. It should be. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of the value you might get on him, we'll see how the betting public plays him. I mean, he's two for 15 in his career and he's getting those minors. He just really hasn't had too many scores. And his last win, though, did come at the, the mile and an eighth distance. And it came down to having a little bit more of a forward trip. Maltese Fac Falcon, excuse me, was behind him as a respectable horse out in Southern California. And, um, you know, I, I will say when I kind of I don't want to say poke fun at him. He is two for 15. It took him a while to figure it out, but I do think he's been competitive in his last few and maybe the change of surroundings and, and third start off the long layoff, that, that's what he needs. And maybe that's what helps him get into the winner's circle. Siege of Boston is the number six. He's another horse that's been nibbling lately without getting to the winner's circle. I thought he had a trip in the Monmouth race where he shot up the inside and could not finish with Fort Washington. I thought he had a trip at Ellis Park two starts back where he sat a good one in behind the lead and just couldn't finish it off. And last time out of Kentucky Downs, he's run well at Kentucky Downs in the past and he ran well again without winning. At five to two, it's just a little bit too light for me in this competitive field because more often than not, he finds one better. Absolutely. Um, and then you have to back up the fact that he hasn't won in nearly 16 months. And that win came at Laurel and you kind of said it, he's almost there, but he doesn't get it done. And his past performances reflect that through and through. And I feel like you look at some of his races and you're like, well, he needs to go further. And then he goes further and it doesn't pan out. There's just too many things that have worked against him. And I think a lot has to do with his running style. He's been pretty far back. So at a short price, completely with you, he wouldn't be a horse that I would use in here at those odds. And if the race is washed off, I can't even imagine what this field would look like other than Film Star would be a prohibitive favorite. After all, he was second in the Woodward last year and would be the most likely winner by a long way. Let's take a look at our top selections, hopefully on turf for the Knickerbocker on Sunday. We're both going with Reckoning Force. Tactical speed, I think you really can't teach that in a race like this. He is going to be within range when they turn for home. No, and I said it earlier, I love Fort Washington. I just don't think the trip works out for him. Um, you can have the the best horse in the race, I guess, on paper. But if it doesn't unfold the way you need it to, I think you're in trouble. And I think Reckoning Force has the upper hand in terms of the trip, should be more forward. Um, we're not going to see the fractions that he saw last time out of Kentucky Downs um, at all. Uh, sub 45 to the half, going a mile. Now you're going a mile and eighth in New York. He just figures to be forward. And I think looking at the 
kind of caliber that he was able to beat two starts back or when he was second three starts back he fits well scared about redistricting don't know what i'm going to get for him after being pulled up in the hollywood derby but i think reckoning force might actually offer a little bit more value four three one five for ashley four six three one for me it's the grade three knickerbocker on sunday at belmont at the big a best of luck hey buddy you look like you're in need of a winner and just remember if you like and subscribe right over here you can get all of the great content on drf.com including race of the day stakes previews and lots more featuring me and my superb selections i trust me you're not going to regret it